Yes. <laughs> Hello, guys. I feel like I'm just hanging at home with my besties. Yeah. So excited to see you, um, especially on International Women's Day, celebrating a very special holiday that I didn't know existed a couple years ago. So thanks, yeah. Instagram, for that. Um, but really, we just want to share a bunch of insights and come together as women and kind of just be in community, learning, and supporting one another. Um, so thank you, YouTube Space, for hosting us. This is just awesome and cozy, and the staff has been so accommodating and helpful for us. And thank you to Dermalogica for initiating this and for asking us to host and for supporting these other women on the panel to share their story. Um, Jane has been such a friend to almost 30 and the girls on the team as well. Um, so thanks to them for putting this on and for providing those amazing gifts that you guys have waiting <laughs> and your goodie bags that you can use tonight. Um, so when we were talking to Dermalogica about doing an event for International Women's Day, we were kind of trying to think of ideas of topics that would resonate with women and that would resonate with the people on our panel and provide value to the women that we brought together in the room. And one of the topics that really came up for Lindsay and I so often was the topic of balance. And people would be like, okay, how are you doing, you know, running your business and having all your friends and having, you know, your relationship and working on yourself and working out and it's posting on Instagram 24 seven. And then are you staying balanced? Like what's balance like? And we'd just, at every time I'd be like, I'm not the person for balance because I don't have it. But I realized that some women at some points in their life do have it, and at other points in your life you don't have balance. But for a lot of us, balance can feel like another thing on our to-do list, and it can feel like something that actually provides us more pressure than makes us feel good. And balance looks different for everyone. So someone else's crazy is someone else's balance. Someone else's chaos is like the perfect medium for that person. So it just looks so different for everyone. So we wanted to kind of break that and talk to these amazing women, these entrepreneurs about balance and then about their story, their journey, and really just hear from them some of the um, difficulties that have led them to the place that they are today to provide us some inspiration, you know, as we women rise together on International Women's Day and every day. And we are the Almost 30 Podcast. I'm Lindsay Simsick, and this is Krista Williams, my best friend and business partner. And, you know, as she said, we're asked a lot about balance. And I think through our relationships, you know, whether they're a business partner, a friend, family, with other women, really do help us to keep accountable just to take care of ourselves. And again, it's going to look different for everyone. So, you know, what we hope in these conversations or this conversation tonight is that you know, our panelists can serve as expanders for you. You can say, oh wow, I've been there, I've felt that way. And maybe I can take a moment and do what they did and just feel better and, and put less pressure um, on yourself as you navigate this life and as you really find out what fills you up. Um, so I'd love to take a moment and have each one of our panelists introduce themselves, who they are and what they do. Thank you. My name is Jane Werwind and I'm the founder of Dermalogica, a skincare products, and, uh, which seems an incredible journey because uh, we started the company in 1986, we launched the product. So playing the long game as an entrepreneur and I'm thrilled to be here. Nothing better than celebrating International Women's Day and I think we have a huge responsibility in recognizing and celebrating that because women and men around the world look to, to us to, to speak our truth, set an example, and, and hopefully, you know, if you see it, you can be it. And for entrepreneurs, I think that's really important. So I'm thrilled to be here, thank you. I'm thrilled to be here next to you. <laughs> oh my God. Um, um, I'm Deepika. I've been doing the beauty influencer thing for the past three years. And um, about a year, gosh, a year and a half ago, I launched a digital platform called Live Tinted, which is all about encouraging inclusivity in the beauty industry, something that I feel like is a long time coming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being in this space, I started on the corporate side of the industry and then became a beauty influencer and really saw the holes from everything in between. And launched this platform to really make it so girls can walk out the door and, and, and boys and whatever you identify as um, can just like walk out the door and feel good with who they are. It's been great. Yeah. 
Awesome. Um, I am so, so thrilled to be here. I don't know how I ended up on this panel, but I'm just, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna stay here. Um, my name is Sarah Tan, and I am the Senior Fashion and Beauty Editor at Bustle. Um, and for those of you who don't know uh, what Bustle is, Bustle is uh, one of the largest millennial feminist women's websites on the internet. Um, we are based in New York, but I'm out here in LA holding it down, um, covering all things fashion, makeup, skincare, wellness, um, and just trying to produce content that um, empower our readers, so, yeah. Awesome, yeah, I'm having the same moment of just <laughs> all of you all, so thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Danica Breisha, I'm the founder and CEO of Model Meals, so it's a healthy meal delivery business. Um, I also work as a plus size model, I mean, it's a, the, we could have a whole panel about <laughs> um, As a plus size model in the fashion industry, and I work with um, specifically women on wellness and self-care. So I just got back from a 66 event tour last year where we uh, traveled around helping women cultivate more self-worth, self-love. Um, and I just feel really grateful to be the woman that I needed to see in the magazine growing up. Um, I struggled with eating disorders and all that. So to be here and represent beauty and to see where beauties come through brands like yours is just incredible. So thank you. Mm, beautiful. Um, and we were able to go to one of our events on tour. It was it was magic. I don't know how you did it. Um, but a lot of, honestly, 66, I was like, well. Um, a lot of you women even kind of touched on it. But for women, it's been such a beautiful thing for almost 30 podcasts to interview people and female founders and female entrepreneurs and females in the space because so much of what we do is so heart-centered. We don't really do anything unless it means something to us and unless it moves us or you know will move other people so that has been such a beautiful thing i would love to hear from you jane um what were some of the defining milestones in your career that led you to create dermalogica well i think just as you as you said that everything starts with the why you know why why am i doing this why do i want to do this and for me it was it was really simple um my mother had been widowed at age 38 with four girls to raise i'm the youngest of four and the five most important words she said to us was learn how to do something. Mm -hmm. She was a trained nurse, so she fell back on that training to keep her family together, literally to put food on the table. And so I came into the industry because I got a Saturday job working in a local hair salon, fell in love with the industry, and realized if I have a skill set in my hands that I really learn about and really learn well, so I have it in my head, and I really love it, so it's in my heart, mm -hmm. then with those three things, with my head and, and my heart and my hands, I can travel anywhere in the world. It will always be with me, and I will always be able to fall back on it. So I think a defining moment was my, my mother modeling that resiliency and also you know, really drumming into us, you better have something that you can do. It's not just about an education, it's about learning how to do something. And I came into an industry, and the crazy great thing about the salon industry is uh, more women start businesses in our industry than any other industry in the world. 64% of all the salons are owned by women. Mm. So it's an economic powerhouse for women. So I think the defining moment was the fact that my father had died. It was a tragedy, but my mother rose to it and kept us together, and it's, she just set an incredible example. Mm. And then I got my first Saturday job in the local salon, and that was it. I've never done anything else. Mm. Mm. My first job was at Outback Steakhouse, so. <laughs> <laughs> Hostess with the mostest. And, and most of us get our first jobs in, a, really in a local entrepreneur, a small entrepreneur that started a new community. Mm. You know, and I'm, one of the things I'm committed to is bringing back and building back our communities. We need our local entrepreneurs. We need our small entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And Danica, I know you know some of your story, but and there's a lot that really led you to create Model Meal. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, I mean, I struggled with food and my body for most of my life. I didn't, like I said, I didn't see anyone that looked like me in the media. I was a bigger girl, and so I decided very young that um, if I could just lose weight, I could be happy and I would be worthy. And so I spent most of my life with um, different eat varying eating disorders and struggling a lot with food. Um, and I moved to New York in 2014 as a model and decided to try out a different kind of eating, just eating real food and not so like diet and diet and calorie counting. And, and I did something called the Whole30 and it changed my life. And it um, not so much like, it wasn't even the physical stuff, it was the consciousness. It was like I woke up and I realized that I had gotten used to feeling 
one way and not realizing that there was a greater experience for me. And so I continued and it led me down this whole path of self-care, but I ended up losing uh, you know, about 40 pounds and I lost all my modeling jobs because I wasn't big enough anymore because I was a plus size model. And so I decided, well, you know, I'm really passionate about this food. It's changed my life. And as a result, I'm putting this person into the world who is more conscious, who is happier, who is more connected. And if more people had access to this kind of food and I can make it easy for people to eat this way, then I can literally change the world because what the food that we run on is the quality of the experience of life we're gonna have. And so I just started cooking out of my apartment in New York City. I have a 200 pound dog. It's totally illegal to like run a food <laughs> business out of your apartment. Oh my um, God. But I did it small scale and it just um, grew. Like you said, it's, I mean, it's not a long game since 1986, but it's a long game for, you know, yeah. for that's where I'm trying to head. Um, and it's been really beautiful to see how this food is used. It's medicine, it's healing. Um, and so just to put my energy into something that I love every day and that helps so many people has been really special. It speaks from your heart because you have yeah. that experience. Yeah. It's yeah. your big why. Yeah. It changed my life. Mm -hmm. Totally. So good. And in that, like, so much of what we do as women in business and just in life, we put ourselves into it. It becomes mm -hmm. deeply personal, everything that we do. and. You know, for you, Deepika, you're you're the face of your brand in so many ways, and you know, <laughs> you are. Yeah. And um, you know, I, I can imagine that it's it's kind of hard to make it personal, but then not take things personally, yeah. right? So, how do you kind of create that boundary? I mean, it, it's tough, and even on the beauty influencer side, it's also so crazy to me hearing like how many parallels I feel with everything you're saying about like. Growing up, and that was the exact motivation I had of not seeing a brown girl in the media and, and feeling this sort of like, why not me feeling? And, and what, what did I have to change about myself? I mean, I dyed my hair blonde, I got blue contacts, I grew up in Texas, so I wanted to look like all the blondes <laughs> out around there. But it's just like, it, it's, it makes me, it made me so sad after entering into the beauty industry. And I felt like at a point I was like the token brown girl in all these beauty campaigns. And I did feel like I was like that face. And it almost like, drove me crazy because there were so many other girls out there that they would DM me and ask me for like advice and things. And I was like, wow, you really deserve a shot. But because of my, um, my network, quite frankly, of how I was on the corporate side of beauty, I just reached out to a ton of my friends who were all working at beauty brands. I was like, I'm an influencer, hire me. <laughs> and I just, but there's so many other people out there. So, you know, even just hearing that I'm the face, that's actually the narrative I wanted to change and say that there's a whole spectrum of women that mm -hmm. deserve to be the face. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of the ambition and motivation behind launching Live Tinted is to sort of not make it about me, but a whole spectrum of people. Mm -hmm. And I think that honestly for me is way more fulfilling. I've always been more fascinated about the business side of the industry rather than, I'm not really good at selfies. I mean, it's not my thing. I know. Yeah, please, I've seen your selfies. You're good at your selfies. It's, there's been a lot Girl, of selfies. Girl, you just gotta keep trying. There's so much like exactly. 600, you'll get there's one. There's 100 ones that happen before that one that you post, and I think like you eventually learn, or learn your angles. Right, but right. yeah, <laughs> but I, I just I enjoy so much more. Like after we've featured some women on Live Tinted, they've gotten brand campaigns, and like mm -hmm. that feeling is just like. It, it's so fulfilling, especially when you work in an industry like beauty that can feel so superficial. Mm -hmm. And I think, like you said, I wake up every day feeling excited about that. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And for you, Sarah, just to kind of keep yeah. um, on the topic of boundaries, uh, you work from home. Yes, yeah. I do. Oh my gosh. So how do you? It's hard. We do too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We do too. You get it. Yeah. You know, it it's... took me a while to figure that out. Um, but in terms of you know uh, balancing the personal and the professional, you know, so I work for a company, you know, and um, but I am sort of the face of the brand out here um, in LA. And, um, you know, when I started out uh, as a writer, it wasn't um, to become the face of any uh, of, you know, the company or, you know, I wanted to just write stories and share other people's stories. Um, and, you know, with Twitter was around when I started, and so I got to do that. But then, you know, Instagram just took things to a whole new level. And, um, you know, Bustle doesn't require all the editors to be active on social, but it's definitely encouraged. Um, and I have so much fun on social media, like just sharing like hundreds of videos with my dog, just like <laughs> all the sorts of things. Like, um, but uh, most importantly, it's given me um, the opportunity to connect with you know uh, our audience in a different way. Um, uh, 
uh, and our readers, but you know, it can get weird because it's like I am representing my company, but I'm also, you know, I want to share, you know, my thoughts on Donald Trump sometimes, or you know, um, I'll be at an event, I'll be like just expressing myself, like who I am, and being silly, and like sometimes it'll give me pause, and I'll be like, is this the right thing that like is this the right thing to share? Should I be doing this? Um, but you know, it's always like com comes back to just you know, me making sure that like I'm being my most authentic self and I'm, you know, like sharing. First of all, I get to connect with readers and followers of mine who like you guys, um, you know, they'll tell me like, it's so cool to see someone who looks like me um, having a job like yours, mm -hmm. which is like, so cool, like that just makes my job like so worth it, right? Um, or, you know, sharing a, a story that I wrote and that, you know, they'll tell me that it really resonated with them and they really connected with it. Um, so that part of the personal side of social media um, is just like really, really awesome. Um, but, you know, my outlook on it, you know, at the end of the day, it's like if I feel like I'm forcing myself to do something, if I'm not being authentic, um, luckily I don't have trolls. I'm sure that you guys do. <laughs> I haven't had to like really oh, yeah. deal with all that. Um, and if it's not fun, then I, you know, then I will just, you know, reel it in and, and not share as much. But yeah. And then the working at home thing. I have an off like an office and then I try to like do as much work in there and I don't let myself turn the TV on. <laughs> I won't let myself sit on the couch. Um, uh, but yeah, it's just all about figuring it out. Mm, yeah. It's yeah, it's tough. Yeah, we are very unsexy. At home. <laughs> um, and that leads me to my next question. So when I, I was in the corporate world for eight years before we started and while we were starting. And I remember thinking about entrepreneurship and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so like sexy and like everyone can do whatever they want. And like, it's like you hang out, you can like bring your computer to the pool and like do work with like a drink. Like, oh my God, like this is amazing. I cannot wait to be an entrepreneur. And you know, now that we're in it, it's amazing, but it is, there's a lot, you know, there's a lot that you deal with and there's a lot of very, very, very unsexy stuff, almost more unsexy than when I was working for someone else at like a big corporate company. Um, so I wanna talk about that. I wanna talk about the unsexy stuff that we do as entrepreneurs that um, can also be very gratifying. You know, there are times when I'm like talking to our accountant in Utah and I'm like, this is kind of gratifying because I'm doing this by myself. Um, Sarah, for you, when you know, you're working with Bustle or on pieces or at home, like what is really unsexy about your job that you find to be like, okay, I'm so glad oh I'm doing gosh, this. Oh my gosh, there's so much unsexiness about my job. Um, <laughs> I think that there's this like preconceived notion that being a fashion and beauty editor is like all glam all the time. Um, and it is, like there are definitely, you know, a lot of fun <laughs> moments. Like, you know, I get to go on cool press trips and I get to, you know, meet founders of amazing brands that I'm a fan of. And that's all really cool, but you know, it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, I'm not just like getting a free facial, like I have to go home and, you know, you know, transcribe the interview and make sure that like, you know, I got all my notes and produce content and write that story. And even though like I love writing and, you know, um, it's, I, I feel so lucky that I have the opportunity to do this. Like it's hard sometimes, like, you know, creating content, like um, trying to figure out the best angle and, and then also just like forming the sentences like you know it can take like me like hours you know and then sometimes there's you know longer features and pieces where you know it's like months of reporting and research and so um, you know that I feel like is the stuff that people don't realize and obviously they don't see because I'm not like posting a selfie of myself at like two in the morning mm -hmm. you know with like red eyes and mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's just the most gratifying part is that connecting with the readers and you know people really you know reaching out to me and telling me that they read my story and that um, you know it, uh, they uh, or they learned something new um, and it gave them a new perspective like that makes it just like all worth it um, and then like getting invited to do stuff like this is like <laughs> so cool yeah what about you Danica the first thing when you say the least sexy is I think about the sweatsuit that I wear every single day oh. and uh, that's covered in dog hair and it just goes on and off. Um, my coach that I work with is like forcing me to buy like a silk set of pajamas or something and it's like mildly sexier. Um, I was like, do I wear the pink fur in the house too? I'm like trying to, you know, um, faux fur, in case you thought it was a pink animal. 
Um, <laughs> You're like, vote for a rental. Right. <laughs> rental, yeah. Um, unsexy. I mean, I started laughing in the beginning when you said that because I thought back to the early model meals days. Um, at first, just, you know, cooking everything, delivering everything. I was six figures. I was three months late on my rent. Um, I moved into my parents' garage for two years and lived in my parents' garage. And I met this guy. And um, he was actually in sober living at the time. And so, like, to the, between the two of us, we didn't have anywhere to invite each other back. I was like, well, there's the garage and <laughs> and um, and and then kind of going not that you should invite the person back on the first night, but um, <laughs> moving on. Uh, when we started the business, I think about all the different like late, super, super late nights where we're in the kitchen all day and then we're, we were actually packing all the boxes and then I was actually delivering the food and it's like midnight, deliveries were supposed to get there at 8 p.m. and I'm like eating like a, a sweet potato with my, my hand in the car while I'm <laughs> delivering and you know, you just have those moments of, of you know, getting down and dirty. And so as, as I grow my business and now people look at it and they see this big business I try to always remind um, reminds people that it it's not always it doesn't go from zero to everything overnight you know and there are you are gonna have those moments to move back in your parents garage when you're 28 years old and you were you know a big-time model and you moved back in it was like pretty defeating for a little bit um, but but I wouldn't change it for the world and um, and, and there's some funny moments and some not so glamorous moments, but um, it's been incredible. Mm. Humbling moments too, where Humbling it's like, moments. <laughs> where it's so good. It kind of brings, and I think that's what like the awareness as whether you're an entrepreneur or you know you are a woman in business, it's like, you know, those moments can ground you. And I think we intuitively know that that's what it is. Mm. I think, you know, cause we just having that awareness is, I think so vital mm. to be able to evolve and, and move forward. So, um, you know, we've made mistakes along the way, missteps, and I'm sure you all have too, and all of you have as well. I mean, one of ours, you know, looking back now, not necessarily a mistake, but just like a huh. We so curious. are you the are. name of our podcast oh, is almost yeah. thirty, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> We're, you know, you thinking like, that we would never age. Come. I'm like, yeah, literally, they're like, what do you think this would become? I'm like, obviously nothing, because I'm 30, and she's 31. <laughs> like, so it's one of those things we look back, and I guess, like, what we learn is just, you know, we always just kind of followed our intuitive hits along the way. And while, yes, you know, we are not almost 30 anymore, it is just that metaphor for what we're talking about, and hopefully you know, making people feel uh, less alone when they're going through any transition. But I'd love to know, um, let's start with you, Jane. Um, you know, what missteps or mistakes do you look back on and you're like, wow, like I learned so much that was so profound, things like that. Well, I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're playing the long game, right? So whatever setbacks you have and whatever, you know, times that you're not feeling great, you're playing a long game. It's not about that time, that moment, that week, that month. You have a vision that's taking you forward, or at least I believe you should, you know, write down your vision, see it big. Most people write the script of their journey too small. Write it big because that's where you want to go mm. and, and see it and put it in as much detail as you possibly can so that when opportunities come to you to fulfill that, you recognize that is what's happening because it's not like a shock. You're not, not bewildered by it. You're like, oh, hang, hang on, this, this dot makes sense. You know, Steve Jobs used to talk about making dots on paper and they seem random, but they all join up. Mm -hmm. And I think that, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the critical thing. I think that you're playing a long game, you're focusing on, on where you're going. And, you know, nothing, nothing else, nothing seems trivial because everything matters all the time. I think you have your own leadership style. And I think when you lead a team, my belief is you lead from the front. Mm -hmm. And meaning you're the first to go over the hill and, the, and show the troops mm -hmm. <laughs> it's safe. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's nothing you won't do. I would never ask anyone to do something that I wouldn't do myself mm -hmm. and that I probably haven't done myself. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think that you, you, you feel like you might have made a mistake or a misstep, but you regroup, you learn from it, and you move forward. And you say, you know, I'm not going to do that again. Probably one of the early things, we launched uh, Dermalogica in Taiwan. And it was one of our first international markets. 
and they persuaded us that because you know the culture was different, the language was different, mm. uh, the industry was different. Domologica has never used the word beauty. I don't like the word beauty. I think it's objectifying, mm. and I and I think it narrows us. And mm. anything that shrinks us or diminishes us, I think we have to question. So we went to Taiwan to launch the product and they wanted to use the word beauty. Well, they actually wanted to use, you know, Miss Taiwan as the model. And I said, no, no, it's can't, I can't, I just, no, 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 no. And um, we were persuaded to launch differently and it was not a success. And, and after six months, uh, we stepped back and said, okay, we made a, a huge mistake because even though this culture and country is different, Domologica is not. This is a brand. This is not just a product. This brand has a voice and a personality, and we will not shrink it for anybody. This is what we want to say about skincare. It's about skin health and wellness. It's not about beauty, luxury, pampering, or indulgence. Other people can say that, and that's up to them. That's their choice, but it's not our viewpoint. And so we, we never made that mistake again. And every market we've gone into, we're in 108 countries now, mm. we always go in and every time they say, you know, the name, we don't like it, nobody can say it, the packaging's a little ugly, whatever it is. <laughs> and you have no jars, we wanted a pink jar with a gold lid, okay, <laughs> fine. Then, you know, start your own skincare company. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, this, yeah, this, uh, <laughs> yeah, this, this one doesn't, doesn't change. So we listen, being a patient, we go, you know, everything you've said, we take we respect. However, Dermalogica is an established brand. It doesn't behave differently. And, you know, no, nobody puts it in the corner. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I, I, I've led that way. I think that, you know, when you make a misstep, you recognize it. And I believe it is usually when you have taken a, a step away from what you actually know to be your truth. Mm -hmm. You were persuaded that something you, you were thinking of doing wasn't enough you know, good enough, big enough, right enough, mainstream enough, thin enough, tall enough, whatever that thing is. And at some point we have to say, I'm enough. Mm. It's enough. And I have a viewpoint and don't ever, ever let somebody shrink that. You know, you bring your crazy, whatever it is. <laughs> Every one of us is perfectly custom built to lead the life we're predestined to have. And if you change any bit of that about yourself, I believe that you know, you, you may lose sight of the track that you're on. And uh, so that's sort of how I feel about mistakes. <laughs> it's usually when you've stepped away. <laughs> You know, if you just, you stepped away for a minute with the best intention, you know, you blinked, you felt awkward, you felt, <coughs> you felt, you didn't, I'm too young I'm to argue back on that, I'm too, I'm a little too shy, I don't know enough about that, I'm foreign, I'm this, I'm whatever. No, 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 you know, you know your voice, you know your truth, you know what feels right to you, you know, and even if everyone else says that, no one else is doing that good that means you will be the first one <laughs> you'll be unique and that's exactly how it should be mm. thank you uh, yeah. 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 Well. just keep talking please yeah. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh and for you it's even I mean, really? <laughs> I, was like, I mean, so I have it. I feel like I'm in year one of what you did in 1986. And I, I've already, I feel like I make mistakes every hour of the day. Um, and I, yeah, and I, and I honestly do feel like it's okay. And I think, you know, I think back and I'm like, God, I can't wait in like five years to look back and feel like that was supposed to happen. Yeah. But I actually, I feel that now. And it's, it's weird. Like, I don't sweat the small stuff, like little things that happen in the day. I'm like, you know what? It's fine. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Like, that's a learning lesson. Let's just keep going. For me, the hardest part has been team building and growing the team and, and knowing who to hire and like, because I want to do so much. Like, there's this big goal of evolving beauty standards, which I no longer want to use the word beauty, but, <laughs> but, but because whatever it's, ide standards. it's identity, right? Totally. It's yeah. about identity. That's totally fair. And yeah, I know that makes me think about it. But it, in the holistic view of like what this industry stands for, that's a big goal. And, and so it, I, I feel like I need to like dwindle it down to day by day so you don't feel defeated and feel like you're making mistakes and take it as learning lessons and really have a like path to get there. And I think specifically, Specifically, an example that we did 
So for Live Tinted, we, we don't, I don't believe in a blog. I don't feel like people read blogs anymore. I think we digest content through social media and like things like Instagram. And I think the way you treat Instagram can be treated like a blog post. People just do the comments on there. And so one of our series is, was called No Shade. And what it was, was a, a way for us to subtly call out brands who don't, we don't feel like are doing inclusivity right. But what I learned through doing a few of those was that it led to a really negative conversation. Mm -hmm. And that is the exact opposite of what I want Live to stand for. Like our whole goal is to bring positivity, not just to the, the beauty identity standard industry, but, <laughs> um, but to social media as a whole. And so real quickly, when things got negative on there, we had like a regroup and I was like, guys, like we cannot do this. Like mm -hmm. these conversations are going down the wrong paths instead of, and by us calling it out, it's actually only keeping the convo going. And mm -hmm. there's other ways we can do it. So instead mm -hmm. of calling out the brands that aren't doing are doing it wrong, we focused on encouraging the brands that are doing it right yeah. and heroing them mm -hmm. and keeping the conversation around that. But we had to go through it to learn and just apologize to like the community because it got really negative and it's like the last thing social media needs is more negativity. Mm -hmm. So I mean it's just been a learning lesson though. So I, I don't look at it and it's so crazy because when I was doing the influencer thing solely and now running this business and everything I want to do with it, you just start to stop sweating the small things. Like before I would be so stressed out if like something like the, the image didn't get like a thousand and one likes or something, you know, crazy. Um, but now it's like when you have such a bigger goal and a bigger dream, you start to realize these little things are so minute to your bigger mm -hmm. goal. Yeah, you keep that bigger picture. In your yeah, head. yeah, when you focus on that, yeah. all the little things start to feel like NBD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, beautiful. Um, something that everyone in here can relate to is having a work or career, passion, whatever they're doing, and then having your personal life. So your relationships, family, friends, everything I was talking about before. Um, how do you, ladies, this is for all of you, we can start with you, Jane. How do you balance your family personal life and you as a human outside of the business and your big picture goals? <laughs> well, I don't believe in balance. Uh, <laughs> uh, my mum my mom taught me life's not about balance, it's about resilience. Mm. You can't control life. You don't know what's going to happen to you. All you can control is your response to it. And in order to have a response that will get you through it, you have to have resilience. So for me, I mean, I started Dermalogica with my boyfriend, now husband. We have two daughters that we raised together here in Los Angeles. Um, it's all a big mess of, you know, everything. Big, messy life, that's what it is, which is what I want. I want a big, messy life. I want a big mess of everything. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's work and, and you bring work home. There's no such thing. People say, you know, I, you know, don't take work home. You leave your work at the door. Well, that would be ridiculous. I mean, I'm busy talking about, you know, I'm trying to develop a product. I'm like, what do you think of this? And I'm excited about it. I'm excited. I want to talk about it. And so we would talk about it nonstop. And then people would say, you know, um, you know, don't bring your emotion to work. Oh, no, no, no. You bring all of your emotion. Bring everything. Bring your whole big messy self because you'll need it all. You need it all. Don't take any of it away. So for me, I never think of, you know, a work and a life and a relationship. I, I do everything. It was Friday night and I'm tired and it's been a long week, but I want everyone to come over for dinner. So I call my friends, order Indian takeout, stick it all in, you know, sort of platters that looked like I might have, have sort of construed some kind of a meal. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and that was it. And everyone come, and then we'll just you know pitch in and bring some wine or bring whatever. And and none of us had time to do it. And you make time to do it because otherwise you won't do it. Mm -hmm. So I don't try and keep it balanced very much. I just try and, and enjoy all of it. It's messy. Don't don't beat yourself up because you haven't got it balanced. That's what I would mm -hmm. say. You know, my mum had no balance whatsoever. My dad died, she couldn't even drive a car. But she figured it out and she did a great job and never was balanced. It's just about resilience. Mm -hmm. You can do this. You mm -hmm. can definitely do this. You were made for it, custom built. Crushing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. Shameful yeah. press. <laughs> I want to go to whatever church you're yeah. Yeah. It's just... He's like, hold on, let me stun you all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I feel this, this idea of like work-life balance, I feel like in this day and age, it's just like when you love your work, it is your life, and that mm. sort of feels like a balance. And that's it's why this, you started it. That's mm. exactly why you started it. And I think like there is a difference between balance and self-care, and I think like I don't strive to have balance in my life, especially year one. Like, mm -hmm. I know what I signed up for. I, I chose to do this, and I'm balancing being an influencer and doing this new 
CEO role that I'm figuring out every single day. And I think like you go into it with a conscious mindset of like, I know what I'm sort of like sacrificing, but that's okay. But that doesn't mean I should sacrifice myself and right. my self care mm -hmm. and priorities mm -hmm. around that. And whatever that means, if that means for me, it means cutting out social things. Like I haven't been on a date in a year and a half, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I'm, not bothered. I'm, just <laughs> I'm just saying though, like in my mind, I consciously like my friends are like get out more. You need to go meet someone, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I wouldn't even be myself on that date if I went yeah, on mm -hmm. it because my mind is so on my job and like that's okay like I'm it's literally fine. building my yeah. dream life and so I, I think there's a time for everything and mm -hmm. right now I'm in a place where I'm a very I don't even like to use the word selfish but it's 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 it is about me which is my business which is something so extraordinary and big that I have to achieve so um yeah the word balance is really tricky because I I don't really care to have a balance right now. No, you're liking yeah. the whole thing. I love it. <laughs> yeah. and, and there are days where I like step outside and I just like need to take a big breath, but I'm like grateful because I'm literally like, oh my God, I live in LA and it's like, this is like amazing. And it's, it's honestly little things like going outside and taking a breath is like, yeah. a, you, you realize it's like a luxury. You sometimes just forget because you work from home, mm -hmm. literally in my garage working all day. And then you're like, whoa, it's like midnight. And it's just like stepping out and doing that. It's like, I dreamt of this moment. So how can I really complain? That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, when you guys asked me to be a part of this uh, conversation and it was about balance, I felt like kind of a fraud saying yes, because I don't think that I have uh, the right answer of what balance is or uh, a good example of, of, of work-life balance. Um, but it, it makes me feel better that you guys said what you just said. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think it's true. It's like I feel like I have my dream job and I am constantly working and I work from home. So, you know, there's it, it kind of gets blurred. But um, I feel so lucky to be able to do what I'm doing. Um, but you know, I do feel like I can get really burnt out sometimes and really stressed out. Um, and to me, like, um, well, making time to, you know, have self-care, whatever that means, you know, walking my dog or going to the gym or going out with my friends or whatever. Um, but to me, like the most important thing is having like um, a wonderful support system. Um, you know, I have uh, a loving and, and supportive husband who's here and, <laughs> and my best friend, uh, Mia, and like my family and all of them, you know, they um, really are just, they're so understanding and they know that, you know, like I have to work like four or five nights in a row and that's okay. Um, I have to work on weekends and miss, you know, parties or family outings or whatever. And they totally get that because this is like my dream job. Um, um, but at the same time, they are also the people who are like, hey, like, you should probably take a break. Like, yeah. let's, like, why don't you take the night off? Or, you know, maybe you should go, like, get a massage or whatever. And I honestly think, because I'm sure all of you, you know, you could keep going and going and going. Um, and it's hard to, you know, know when to stop sometimes. Um, and so, yeah, like, I don't think that I would be, like, uh, sane or successful at all uh, without them. So even though they're here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I feel like when I started my business, I decided I wanted to rewrite what it looked like to work to build a successful business because there's such a I feel like there's this sort of myth we're told that you have to hustle and work hard and be miserable and not sleep and miss all of the things. And truthfully, I don't think it's true. I, I really have, yes, there's been late nights and yes, there's been a little bit of that. But the truth is, I love what I do. And I'm smart enough to hire people who are smarter than me mm -hmm. to and, and delegate. Yeah. And and the truth is, I really don't feel like I work that hard. And I'm not sitting here, but I but and it might just be because you do when you do what you love, you love there's it. no separation. And yeah. so I don't label it work, I don't label it life. I live very publicly um, through social media, and so that's certainly been hard with um, life stuff that comes up and it's really learning what's the difference between what's private and what's intimate versus what you know what I can reflect on and provide value from um, and I'm still learning to navigate that but for me I think um, that you can really decide and choose how you want things to run. When I started Model Meals, I knew that I wanted to be able to work remotely if I wanted to. I wanted I wanted to be able to take off and go to Asia for a few months if I want to go to Asia. And how do I put the people in place that can support that? Mm -hmm. And how can I make sure I'm in a role that's remote? And how can I make sure that I can I position myself where I can get in there with my team and get really close to them even if I'm not always physically there? Mm -hmm. And so I will say it's taken me a while and I'm a huge self-care junkie. So I have very specific uh, tools in place to keep me in a space that I don't get burnt out and over 
overwhelmed. Um, so my self-care routine is number one. Like I will not sacrifice sleep to work. It's yeah. just kind of become that, and it took me a while to get there, but I won't sacrifice it. I'm gonna sleep, I'm gonna do my stuff, I'm gonna wake up, I'm gonna do my journaling. Um, and, I, and I've built my life around my, how I want my life to look. We build our companies like mm -hmm. a bespoke suit. Right? Mm -hmm. So we cut it to fit ourselves, which mm -hmm. is exactly, that's the joy of having your own business too yeah. and being authentic yeah. to it. Mm -hmm. And it's also modeling for other people, yes. you know, and giving them permission that yeah. you can take care of yourself mm -hmm. as you build something yeah. that has been in your heart. Mm -hmm. And just a plug, I mean, your self-care checklist, yeah. check out Danica's. It <laughs> yeah. uh, it's yes, it's on my website. It's, 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 it's a game God. changer, yeah. truly, yeah. Yeah. truly. It's really silly, and well, it's simple. It's just a checklist of different self-care, um, to gratitude, affirmations. Every morning I write a biography of myself five years in the future, the so best. I think, what do I want people to say about me? And then I write a journal entry for my future. I just woke up and today I have a sold out show at Madison Square Garden or whatever right. the hell you want to I write. literally read hers yeah. and I like wrote mine. You're I was dream, like, I just woke up, I like took it. <laughs> Happy, yeah, and what happens is when you tell yourself you're that, when you practice yes. affirmations, yes. you go out into the world that day yes. and you make choices based on that version of you without having to do any work. It's totally mm. subconscious. I hold myself as that woman five years in the future instead of what what I am today, right? And and our thoughts woman. become right, exactly. And our thoughts become our reality. This yeah. is all the after. So if I can just reprogram my mind, then everything else will catch up. And that's so true. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I have a I have a thing that I tell my daughters, they often repeat it back to me, that when they would say something negative about anything, about themselves especially, and I would say, you can't say that because mm -hmm. your, your, your brain is listening to you. Yes. And your brain doesn't know that you're lying. Mm -hmm. Your brain just thought that what you said was true. So only speak that truth that is what you want to have happen. And then your brain is getting the cue. Your whole body takes that cue. Okay, that's where we're going. That's what we're doing. That's what's going to happen. It's so important. Are you looking to adopt anyone? Seriously. <laughs> 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 just curious. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would love, I know there's you know female founders out there and in here. Um, and anyone really wanting to start something. You know, it could be just a creative pursuit. You could want to like write a song. You could want to do anything really. Um, and, and sometimes we're just, we stop in our tracks because we doubt ourselves mm -hmm. or it becomes too overwhelming or daunting um, and the doing of it just doesn't seem possible. So um, Jane, I'd love to ask you, you know, if you could give advice to female founders who are just starting out, what would that be? Don't shrink yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't shrink yourself. It's the that is the the biggest hurdle. Is it's, I, we all have those moments where we think that uh, we we start to self doubt. We start to self question. Everyone does, but you must push through that. You say to yourself, "What do you hear in your heart? What do you, what is it you want for yourself? What is your what is it you're going for?" Don't let someone dissuade you. People have tapes in their own heads of, of things that were said to them, and they repeat them. You know, well, how can you do that? You don't know anything about that. How can you go and live in America? You've never even been there. Well, what do you know about starting a business? You've never even had a business. I mean, whatever it is, they're just projecting their own insecurities onto you. Because perhaps for whatever reason, they didn't pursue it. And it will make them feel much more comfortable if you don't either. Because then it will prove to them that they couldn't have done it either, and so everyone's okay in their own dissatisfaction. But that's not your story. That's not what you want. That's not who you are. And so when you hear that little voice, you do you just, you know, you just tell it to be quiet. You say, okay, I know you're talking and I'm not listening. <laughs> that's not my truth. That was said to me and I'm repeating it in my head and it's not a truth. Mm -hmm. And you step forward and even if your voice is shaking and you feel nervous, you step forward and you speak up. And you know what it is you want to achieve. And you journal about it, you write about it, you see it, you visualize it. Don't shrink yourself to make other people feel more comfortable. And don't ever shrink what capacity you have for success. It is unlimited, I assure you. And the world needs it.
We need it now. We need all of us now. We, it, we all feel there's something happening in the air. We all feel this sort of intangible something that's getting traction, that's getting sticky, that is shifting identities and how people want to own their identity. And it might not be what it looked like before, but it's still their truth. And we feel that gaining traction and we've got to keep that going. And this is happening for a reason. And every single one of us is part of that happening. So you've got to stand up up, speak up, don't shrink yourself and speak up loud because that is going to tip this whole thing over the hill and then we're on momentum. Mm -hmm. We need you, every one of you. That's mm -hmm. what I would say. Need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was going to say the same thing that you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was my and idea. Yeah. <laughs> don't shrink yourself. <laughs> yeah, I needed to hear that. And I'm sure a lot of you did too. Yeah. Um, Danica, what about you? Oh gosh, um, I kind of touched on this, but but it's about a team. It's about, I, I do so very little of, I, I get a lot of credit, but I, I have an amazing team of people who are aligned. And so I find that I speak often to entrepreneurs, but I also want to speak to the, the people who find something that lights them up and wants to support some that, that vision, right? It doesn't, exactly, yeah. it doesn't make it any less yours. No, no. And, and it's really important to look into yourself and say, what, what, what lights me up, it's okay to, to, to do it that way too. So for me, I think the biggest advice um, will, will really is to um, say you're something before you are. And this can get you in trouble, so bear with me. But one time I wrote a bio that said, like, Danica's a best-selling author, motivational speaker, <laughs> this thing. Someone ended up getting a hold of it. I don't know where I accidentally published it. But someone, and, and they introduced me like that. I was like, you know, actually about the book. That, I haven't written it yet, but, um, <laughs> but, it will but be best in general, to say and to proclaim who you are, right? And and to not, I've never had a business plan. We've, you know, it, there's never been, in my specific company, we haven't, invest, haven't had investors. It's not the fit for us, but it's, you know, it's a beautiful thing if that, it's right for you. But for me, it's just been about starting and just doing one thing and just putting yourself out there and understanding that your business is going to change. You're going to learn so much from your customer that trying to figure out any possible thing that could go wrong or right is just a waste of time. It's just start and you're going to learn so much as you go. Yeah, that's good advice. Mm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, quick fire, ladies. Woo. Get ready. <laughs> okay, Sarah, what's your favorite negativity busting activity? I love to just like sweat it out. Get work it, it out. Work it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your workout of choice? Um, I'm a cardio girl. Mm. I love to run. I ran my first marathon last year. Ooh. And, yeah, oh. It was really fun. Amazing. So yeah. That will never be me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I used to write it down. I was like, I want to run a marathon this year. And then one year I was like, I've oh, never yeah, wanted to totally do it. it. <laughs> yeah. You can never It was like I saw people, that. like I didn't have any goals of my own. So I was like, what's everyone's goal? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we, we all want to do marathons, right? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite way to sweat is just these torches. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I used to do that. Yeah. Over there. Living close. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> okay. Um, Deepika, Deepika, what is your favorite self-love ritual? Oh, so this is a this is a new thing um, in my life. I'm still I'm in the like I feel like the early days. You're like figuring out how to do the self love thing, but um, I've been obsessed with every single night writing down three things that I did that day because I otherwise I go to bed and I'm spinning and spinning yeah. and spinning about the things I didn't do. But if you write down those three things, you're like, wow, I actually like mm. killed it today. Mm. So I have this journal next to my bed and it's like because I'm trying not to work from bed anymore and in my with my laptop because then there's zero there's zero yes. zero like yes. any balance of any mm -hmm. any type. So um, writing those three things down now also like looking back at it, you're like, wow, I'm a badass. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. You know, like just three really good things. And it doesn't always have to be work related, like going to hot yoga in the day or like, um, you know, just like even taking a meeting. It's small things, but even those small things, when you write it down, you start to be like, I, I really am doing this. Mm -hmm. Feels yeah, great. Yeah. I love that. Um, Danica, favorite feel good food or foods? Oh, flaming hot Cheetos. No. Um, <laughs> I love, I actually do. I miss they those. are so good. Feel good food. I'm not going to be lame and plug my business, but that's really all I eat. I'm trying to think what else I like to eat. I like kettle chips. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I'm missing, like, I love any sort of cheese puff. Okay. Um, <laughs> in and out Burger. That was my first job. Oh, yes. yes. Honestly, my favorite job. <laughs> going to be they honest. Really happy. They are. And it yeah. was great. <laughs> um, yeah, they do. That sounds, that feels good. That's that feels great. Good. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> Okay, Jane, I wish that more women, dot, dot, dot. 
I wish that more women would trust their capacity to uh, excel bigger than they ever imagined and most likely bigger than anyone ever told them they could. Mm -hmm. Uh, advice that you would give your 24 or early 20s self, Danica? Hmm. You're going to have a really hot boyfriend one day, and he's not going to mind that you're 200 pounds. <coughs> ah. Love that. Love that. that you, yeah. that, yeah, I mean, really just that you're my, um, how I looked and my size and my weight was, was once I surrendered to my natural size that, um, that my life exploded. It was when I surrendered into how I naturally was. Mm -hmm. And so that was such, that was such a gift. Um, mm -hmm. And to trust my intuition. Mm -hmm. We have all the answers inside of us. We just don't create the space to listen. Mm -hmm. And so we look everywhere else for answers and we ask everyone to tell us what's what we love and what's going to make us happy. And we never stop to ask ourselves, does this feel good for me? So following joy has been something I'm really practicing lately is does this light me up? Every single thing that I do, does this light me up? Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> love that. The coolest thing about women is dot, 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 Sarah. Um, well, I think the fact that we can do literally anything we want to do and the fact that we can bring life into this world, yeah. there's nothing That's we cool. can there's nothing that women can't do. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean you can grow a whole body you in your can body. Grow a whole That's body. crazy. Yeah. Multiple wow. times. I know. <laughs> I know. I think about that literally. Yeah. Probably yeah. yeah. Like you grew a whole brain in your body. Yeah. Like oh. someone else's brain. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like two whole brains and, <laughs> and legs. Like I grew She's legs in my body. <laughs> Everything we do is, yeah. is really cool. Oh. Um, Deepika, what do you love about yourself and why? I think in my whole life, so my parents were are very traditional Indian parents, medical world, and they want so badly for me to achieve like the American dream, but their version of the American dream is very different from my version of the American dream. And I think back to 16 year old deeps versus like 24 year old deeps. And I just think back and I'm like, I was fearless since the beginning. I never let even my parents who are my everything stand in my way because I know at the end of the day, all they really cared about was me being happy, mm -hmm. but their version of happy just looked different from mine. And now my dad's I walk in the house and he's watching my YouTube videos and he's like my number one fan. And it's like, honestly, like to hear your dad say he's proud of you when all he wanted you to be was like a surgeon and go to Harvard. And then you're like a beauty girl. And it's like, <laughs> he, but he is literally my number one fan and gets that so my purpose cool. is so, is so much bigger than what it appeared to be. Like mm -hmm. there's so many people, family friends in his ear being like, what is she even doing? Like she, she's smart. She could go do this. She could go do that. And now he's like, yeah, she is smart. And that's why she didn't listen to me. And that's like a really, good feeling I think I think being fearless is like the best way that you can kind of lead through life when there's so much distraction and noise telling you that you're supposed to be somebody but you know you're meant to be something else and um, yeah I think that I think that's what I'm proud of myself about yeah, you awesome. Awesome. Preach. It's great. all right last question Jane we'll end with you um, what is your definition of positivity mm. my definition of positivity is uh, I, I, I said it earlier, I was uh, looking and finding the joy, even in a hard situation, because you can't choose the situations you're going to be in, but there's joy in there somewhere, looking and finding that joy, um, looking and finding. The word finding and found is important to me right now. I find words come to me, you know, you, you've all found this, there's a certain word just keeps coming back at you and you think, why does that word keep coming? There's a reason, you know, so pay attention to all those kind of things. Um, right now, I'm very focused on uh, a project called Found LA, which is around finding and, and um, supporting local entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And I find that really positive for me because uh, in, in neighborhoods and communities, we find our neighborhoods and communities um, to be strongest when they have you know, entrepreneurs that are being successful. They, uh, they build back our communities and they create jobs. And we often think this national situation and we may feel a little overwhelmed and out of control. And it can, it's easy to feel negative about it and not positive. But if there's nothing we can do to control that right now, what can we do to control this? And so I'm seeing people are really becoming locally focused. It's, it's a lot of positivity and people are getting focused in their school. They're getting focused in their neighborhood 
neighborhood. They're doing what they can about their street. Mm -hmm. They're getting to know their neighbors because this idea of this local positivity, I'm seeing it happening all over the place and I find it really encouraging. And this idea of the local entrepreneurs bringing back that community and creating the neighborhoods. We don't want to live next door to the big box Amazon <coughs> store, but we do want to live next door to that artisanal coffee shop where you know, a mother and a daughter run it or a father and a son have the mechanics up the road or the florist or the dog room or the salon. And I see a lot of positivity in that despite the fact that nationally and sometimes internationally it can feel a little out of control and negative. Uh, I find positivity in localism. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Let's give these ladies yeah. a hand. I know I speak for I speak for everyone, you know, when I say that like you know, showing for you to speak so honestly and vulnerably about how you show up every day, how you've navigated the years leading up to where you are now, um, just as yourselves and as you said, kind of the big, the big mess. I think it's so liberating, you know, and to take the pressure off of us to be balanced, to be a certain way, you know, buttoned up. Mm -hmm all the things, mm -hmm. and when really, you know, if if you're working with a brand, you've created a brand, whatever it is, that like, it's people who wanna connect. So like showing up as you as a human being um, in whatever form, whatever season you're in, is just, I think, the most important, the important part. So thank you for sharing. Thank you, thank you ladies, so much. Thank you, Dermalogica, for hosting us. Thank you, YouTube Space LA, for hosting us. You have goodie bags outside, and we'll hang out, get some drinks, eat some food together, <laughs> and we'll be hanging out outside. And then this episode will be live on Almost 30 Podcast in a few weeks, so you'll be able to listen again or send to your friends. Mm -hmm. You can find it there. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.